one, what does it mean when you own a property? What taxes do you have to pay? And two, if you're renting property. Now, I think one of the most uh, difficult things is when you're negotiating a contract with your landlord, when you're a business. I think about 80% or 70% of those contracts are difficult and also uh, probably from a tax perspective wrong. We have this all the time. So I want to talk about structuring a good lease with a landlord to make sure that you're actually doing the right things in terms of tax. So what we cover uh, withholding tax, which applies to uh, property rentals. We're going to cover accommodation tax, which is really specific to hotels, and that will be a quick one. And finally, property tax, which uh, if you're the owner of a property, and not necessarily only the owner, you're a long-term uh, lessee also, this has implications to you. Okay. I'm gonna skip that because it's kind of boring. It just shows how old I am, but anyway, it's on our, it's on our uh, website or Facebook page. Let's go next. So let's talk about when you're renting a property. And this is really uh, applies, let's say, to business at this point. And I'm sure it will, as the way the tax department is going, it will shortly certainly apply to those who uh, own property and they're just doing residential rentals. If it doesn't already, to some extent it does. So if you have if you have a company and you're renting a office, for instance, you have either a landlord that's a registered taxpayer, or in Cambodia there's a lot of private individuals that own property. So if you're a registered taxpayer, meaning a company that's registered with the tax department, you are responsible as a collection agent for the government. Withholding tax means exactly that. You're withholding the tax from source. So if you're paying rent to somebody who's not a tax registered taxpayer, obviously if you give them $1,000, they're gonna keep $1,000. They're not gonna go running to the tax department and say, I'll pay the tax. So you as a taxpayer are responsible for making sure the government gets their 10%. So the, if the landlord's not registered, you have to structure the lease a certain way. If there's two registered taxpayers, it should be pretty straightforward. So non-registered taxpayer as a landlord is withholding tax. A registered taxpayer and a registered taxpayer is withholding tax and VAT. So you're paying twice. You're paying the withholding tax and the VAT. Now, I, I know this is probably one of the most difficult things when you're doing a lease with a landlord in this country. And let me start out with those that are not registered taxpayers. What the law basically says, if they're not registered, you have to withhold, as I just said before. So if, let's say your, your rent is $1,000. You say to your landlord, by the way, I have to withhold 10% from you, so I'm gonna give you 10% less. What is the landlord gonna say? Not a chance, right? They, they Normally landlords here say, forget that. You pay me $1,000. So it's important when you're, when you're structuring uh, the rental contract that you actually do what's called gross up, meaning uh, you take the $1,000 and you gross it up 10% so that you're actually paying you divide by nine to do that, by the way. That's quite simple. So you're actually paying 1,111 and 11 cents in your rental contract, and you pay the, take 10% of that, and you pay the tax department. Now, why do you do that? Two, one main reason, I would say, is that you could get the full benefit of the rental being at 1,111.11 instead of 1,000. So if you kind of go 12 months that adds you know, another twelve, fifteen hundred dollars dollars $1,500 to your expenses, and that means 20% less profit tax, right? Because you're reducing your profits by grossing up. So the landlord says, it's, I want my $1,000, and this is the way it's gotta be. Best way to do is get a grossed up contract and pay the difference. So you are taking that amount that you're paying the withholding tax effectively as an expense. Now, if you have two registered taxpayers, um, there's also a benefit for the other taxpayer being the landlord to make sure you gross up because they can claim the withholding tax credit. So if you gross it up to 111.11, at the end of the year that 111.11 they're getting less, they could claim that as a withholding tax credit against their profit tax. So it's always gross up. That's really the simple way to do it. In fact, if you're a business, I would say gross up everything, your salaries, expenses as well. If you're not gross up, your employees, when you say, I'm going to pay you $500, pay them $521. 
because that's if you gross up the tax, that's what it comes to, 521. What uh, people make a mistake with is that if you pay the 500,000 and you pay the salary tax separate as uh, the, the rate, you can't take the salary tax uh, and, and deduct it. But if you gross it up, you could take the full benefit of the expense you're paying the employee. So always gross up, always. Okay. I'll touch upon this quickly because it's probably, well, maybe there is. It's, there's a, something that came out in November, a new instruction, 18410, which basically says that if you, let's say you're a property management company, or have a, a serviced office, so I'm a property management company effectively. I rent offices to, I have 15 offices, I rent them. But I don't own the building, I, I lease the building from the landlord. So if you lease from a landlord, and then you sublease, as long as you're paying the withholding tax to the landlord, you don't have to charge your customer withholding tax, which you had to in the past. So the, the government was effectively getting withholding tax on that same space twice, and VAT. So you're getting 30% on the same space. So if you are a property company and you sublease, you don't have to charge your customers withholding tax if you pay the withholding tax to the landlord. It's just something to be conscious of because I know there's a lot more property companies coming onto the market. So this is very important. I'm gonna breeze through this one. So if you're a hotel, uh, you, you, you should just be aware of that you have to pay, uh, you charge your customers accommodation tax. So if you provide hotel and accommodation services, which it basically means you provide a residential area and a bed, uh, by a hotel, and this includes uh, hotels, apartments, suite hotels, restaurants, hotel apartments, sorry, not apartments, uh, motel, motel, lodges, bungalows, guest houses, tourist camps, other accommodation services, but not a flat or a house, then you have to charge 2%. 2% on the room cost, inclusive of all other services. So if somebody gets a massage or any other services, they have to, you have to charge. Uh, you charge on taxes as well, except for the accommodation tax itself and the VAT. And uh, it's payable at the time of supply. So when it happens, you give somebody a bill and they charge a 2% tax. Now we'll get to the property tax. And this is uh, a little bit complicated in terms of formula, but let's, let's start. So believe it or not, property tax is new in Cambodia. Relatively new, it came in effect 2011. So before 2011, there really wasn't any property tax. So the law of property tax, January 1st, 2011. And it's effectively an annual tax on immovable property. So movable property such as cars, this, this doesn't affect as a property tax, but having a, a, a condominium, a flat, a villa, this is a movable property. The first thing you have to do under this law is to register for property tax. So there's a registration process, which I'll go through quickly later. It applies to uh, individuals and companies. So if a company owns a building or a person owns a building, they still have to register. It's um, basically, we'll do the formulator, but it, the tax itself is 0.1% of the base, and I'll show you what the base is a little bit later. This only applies to properties effectively a value of 100 million real, $25,000 or more. So if your property is worth $22,000, you don't have to worry about it. 25, you have to. And uh, I'll go back to the formulas, the last slide, and very shortly is 80% of the value. Now, this, this gets people a little confused. The tax base is derived from the value determined by the Real Estate Evaluation Commission. This is by the uh, Ministry of uh, finance profits. So it's under the Ministry of Economy and Finance. And the tax payment is a yearly filing. It's due September 30th. Although the way the tax department goes, they keep extending deadlines all the time. So it wasn't due September 30th this year. I think it was December in the end, but normally it's due September 30th. So how do I register? If my property is over 25,000. What do I do to register my property? You go to your tax branch where the property is located and you register. 
two forms to be uh, cognizant of. There's a PT01, which outlines the information about the property. And there's a PT02, which is the property tax application itself. Uh, you need to bring your uh, ID card, birth certificate, or passport, your residency book or your family book or residency letter, certificate of immovable property, ownership, or ownership issued by the cadastral administration. You need your land sell purchase agreement when you bought the property. And you uh, need to bring a water and electric bill, if you're connected, to show the, uh, proof of address. So what does property tax apply to? It applies to land, um, with the exception of uh, building on the, with or without, sorry, it applies to land with or without building. So if you have land itself with no building, it still applies. Or with the building, it does apply. Even if it's covered by water, it applies. What it doesn't apply to is agricultural land, which is a very specific definition for that or um, state land, obviously, the government doesn't tax itself, or facilities on a special economic zone. So the factory itself on the special economic zone doesn't apply to that. It applies to houses, residents, apartments, townhouses, villas, and uh, condominiums. So your tax actually, um, depending on your floor, may be different in a condominium. If you're on the second floor or the 90th floor, you'd have different uh, values by uh, the uh, MEF. Uh, building and construction, less than 80%, no tax. So, unused land, no tax, but there's an unused land tax, which is 2%. That's another tax, but construction under 80%, there's no tax. So, on the last slide, I'd like to go through the calculation. How is this all calculated? So, let's say I have a $100,000 property. So the first thing you have to say is my prop, well, it's obviously worth $25,000 or more, so yeah, get taxed. If your property is worth uh, 100,000, so you have to register and you have a tax liability. So you take 100,000, and the first thing is you times it by 80%. So that's the first part of the formula. It's only 80% of the value of the property is taxed. And then you get a deduction of 25,000 so the key line to this all is here. My property is worth 100,000. I only am taxed on 80% of the value. And then I get a $25,000 deduction. If you hit zero at that point, you know you don't have to pay tax. If it's above zero, you have to pay tax. And the tax is 0.1% of that value, which is then comes down to $55. So on a $100,000 property, $55 tax, not a lot. In the US, I think you could probably pay a couple of thousand dollars. Property tax in the US is really, really hard. And so is it, it's mostly high in other countries as well. So it's pretty reasonable here at the moment, which will probably change because the law is only in effect since September and, uh, sorry, only since 2011. I'm sure as years go by, we'll see an escalation of the uh, tax itself. But that's as simple as it is. So. With my 15 minutes, I left two or three minutes for questions, but that's about it. That's all I really had to talk about for property tax.